Most trips from Virginia to Tangier Island begin with a ferry ride, either from Reedville on Virginia's northern neck, or in this case from Anancock on the eastern shore. The tiny island in the middle of the Chesapeake Bay is only three and a half miles long and one mile wide. The first permanent settlers arrived in 1731 and were largely subsistence farmers. Only after fishing and aquaculture entered the picture did people here have an industry that could create a livelihood spanning centuries. Today, most watermen like Tangier Mayor James Booker Eskridge are involved in crabbing and oystering. Got a couple, three males in this one. Mm -hmm. You want to just drop it under the surface and uh, clean it? The seagrass growing at the bottom of the bay is important to the crabbing industry here because they provide shelter from underwater predators. The water temperature is also an important factor. The crabs only uh, molt when the water temperature at its warmest. They need just the warmer water to do that. Softshell crabs start out as peeler crabs, a blue crab just getting ready to molt. They're taken out of the cage and placed into warm water tanks like these for monitoring. Once it starts to come out of the shell, we separate it into a shed and tank because the other crabs will eat soft crabs. And then once it does shed, you have a few hours, the shell will stay soft. And then refrigerated hard crabs or soft crabs, they'll survive two or three days out of the water. Mayor Eskridge started crabbing with his father when he was nine years old and knew that's what he wanted to do for the rest of his life. Paul Wheatley grew up the same way, going out with his father on the waters at the age of 13. He begins his mornings now just as he did then, preparing crab cages across the main harbor water and use on Tangier Island. He's hoping for a good day, but there are limits to the number of crabs he can catch. Here, they go up to 47 in the summertime, but very few times you catch 47 in the summertime. Right. Usually you catch your bulk of your crabs like in the spring and fall. They're coming from the north in the spring, coming from the southern in the fall. Tangier Island has lost approximately two-thirds of its size since the 1800s, and some geologists predict it will be uninhabitable in as little as 25 years if nothing is done to prevent the erosion and rising water levels. The erosion is a, a big part of it because, like between here and Smith, you've got a lot of small islands, and these islands protect the seagrasses. Once the land disappears, then uh, the wave action is able to destroy the grass beds. A seawall started in 1989 on the west side of Tangier Island has helped fight the erosion and rising tide. And a jetty near the harbor was built after a 2017 phone call from the White House. However, these watermen and all of the island residents hope the federal government can provide funding for another seawall on the other side of the island, plus additional dredging that could keep the island inhabitable. The Virginia Department of Environmental Quality recently gave a grant of $2.3 million for environmental protection and mitigation projects. Very hard work. The people of Tangier Island have a distinct accent that goes back from the original families from Cornwall, England that settled here. The island has a rich history, seen and unseen. During the War of 1812, this was the British, this was their base of operations, Tangier. They had a huge fort on the beach, uh, Fort Albion. They said at one point they had as many as 12,000 troops over here. And uh, of course the actual site now is offshore. The island is actually comprised of three smaller islands connected by bridges, like this one. Big marsh. See yeah. the marsh is bigger. The watermen who depend on the bay for their livelihood are also aware of the threat posed by the erosion and rising sea levels. I'll tell you another thing, Stephanie, besides the water. This little crab's called fiddlers. Mm -hmm. They're, they're taking our island up. The crabbers and oystermen of Tangier Island are part of a unique community where traditions of the Victorian Methodist Church in the 1700s are still active. No alcohol can be purchased, but you're allowed to bring your own. With some 300 residents, signs of Tangier Island's remote disposition are also evident. There's little to no cell phone service, although talks are underway with Verizon to bring broadband here in the hopes of attracting more work from home residents. For now, enjoy the soft shell crabs these watermen provide. They can be ordered at fine restaurants in Virginia and elsewhere, but the best way to enjoy them is to have them at one of Tangier Island's restaurants, where the work and the way of life can be appreciated. On Tangier Island, part of Accomack County, Virginia, I'm Burke Moeller reporting.